Batman and the Outsiders are back! What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mickey Geek Mixer here, ready to give you guys my review on Batman and the Outsiders. And I'll just say, first off, with the, with the way this book is starting, I like it. I like it a lot. I like what Brian Hill is doing, and I definitely love the Og. I mean, love the art. <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like I said something else there. But, I, yes, I love the art. Yeah, Dexter Soy, you got some great art, art skills, man. I love it. Keep it up. I mean, it may just be the first issue, but already, the art's great, and I like where they're going story structure-wise. Now, if any of you guys know, this is about Batman and the Outsiders. They existed... Uh, all right, better yet, let me not talk about that because I actually have a video of that that discusses wh who the Batman and the Outsiders are because this isn't the first ever title to be called Batman and the Outsiders. Oh no, there there have been many books about the Batman and the Outsiders or just called the Outsiders. Like Batman's lead them, Nightwing's led them, and and Black Lightning's led them as well. But either case, like what we have here in this cover, it's got your three main main characters from. Batman and the Outsiders, that being Batman, Black Lightning, and Katana. But these other two, Sig Signal here, and and where are you, Orphan? Ah, oh, yeah, Orphan. Because <laughs> Orphan, she, she's got that mask on, on all black. It's hard to kind of tell, because she got almost all black right there. Only Signal stands out. But that's because Signal was supposed to be the person who works out in the daytime, the stuff. But if you guys are wondering who Batman and the Outsiders are, you never heard of them until now, well, I'll leave a link in the description down below, because I have a video of that, and it explains who the Outsiders were and who the original members were just to give you some some clues on who they are going into this book and now let's go ahead with that out of the way go into this book here but but definitely I have there's one thing I was glad about is that when they did finally bring Batman and the Outsiders back they kept at least the three key members from the original from the original so that was good but in any case in this it starts off really with you looking like just a random family out doing their thing but no this family is actually called the the Rumo the Rumos family I hope I said that name right I'm not sure if I did but basically what it is is that the Rumos family is from Batman's past back when he rescued them from this place called the Ark program the Ark program was a bunch of billionaires trying to make their own set of metahumans and while Batman did show up and stop their their operation he was only able to save the Romos family that being a girl uh, the daughter the daughter Sophia and um, what was the other guy's name the father what was the father's name let me try to find it here uh, Oh yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel and and asked for the mother. Well, she survived too, but unfortunately, due to all that happened to her, she ended up passing away. Um, forget what the the mother's name was. Did it even say it here? No, no, it doesn't look like it said anything here. Oh yeah, that's this is what they called her. Yeah, Anna. They called her Anna, and she passed away unfortunately. But afterwards, Bruce was able to set them up in Los Angeles where the father and the daughter to live a life, but unfortunately, at the beginning of this book here, they are ambushed by a hit by a hitman who kills the who kills um, Sophia's father but can't kill her. He try he tries to kill her by touch touching her because if he touches someone it's like he's able to drain the life out of somebody but he wasn't able to do so he tried to kill her just by throwing her out throwing her onto an oil, oil tank tank truck but unfortunately that didn't work either that's because Sophia's abilities are the fact that she can she has healing abilities and the more pain she feels the more stronger she gets and like the more pain equals to the more strength she has. So that's an interesting power there. But while but while that's all going on, that's really just the opening part of it. The real part that to discuss is the outsiders. And that is in the fact that while it's called Batman and the Outsiders, and Batman is going to be involved in this, he's going to be involved in other things because the one who's really leading the team here is Black Lightning. And it's a good thing they're, they're still making books on Black Lightning. Maybe not his solo 
book, which is sad, which is sad because I really wish they do that. Because I love, I love me Black Lightning from the TV show to the original comic that I, to the original volume comic that I got of him. I became a fan of his and his stuff. But then again, I already, he already kind of caught my attention back on Static Shock times and everything. As, yeah, and but I guess if anything, if he can still at least be in be in these books and still ha be something of a leading role in it uh, that that works for me that that really works for me but in any case what it is is that right now he's leading the outsiders katana orphan and and signal but unfortunately the team's not really a team yet mostly because for one here's the thing this it, before if any of y'all have are only just getting into this and just getting into this thinking that this team is just gonna be introduced like that and they then and their and their past to how they were formed will be introduced as you go on. No, that's not that's not what it is. As a matter of fact, there was a prelude to of the of this comic before that, back in Detective Comics. I forget what issue it was. I'm sure it'll come back to me, but either way, it was it, there was a story arc in Detective Comics that was a prelude to this comic. So I recommend if you guys haven't read that, read that first so you can at least understand what's going on before you enter this book. But either case, with the reason I say that though is because the the aftermath there's still some after effects to what that story in the prelude comic did to signal and that is in the fact that they met a uh, they met a um, super villain named Karma who really got to Signal because Signal thought he, he could beat this guy but in the end he was ambushed and heavily injured and that's left an after mathing effect on him and thinking he's weak and he's holding Batman back and everything and with the way Batman's doing things right now in this book it's understandable because the reason he formed the Outsiders is because he believes Jefferson's the right person for, for Orphan and Signal to help them become, become better better than working with him because he feels that if he he works with Signal and Orphan he'll hold them back and so he he called in Black, Black Lightning Jefferson Pierce being his sil civilian name to help them to help them better be be better heroes because he feels I mean feels he can't they can't be better heroes with him. Well, let's hope he can work through that because it sounds more like he's just trying to run away from his bra his his kid things with them and that's not no surprise you know how Batman is he's very sensitive and he does things in the wrong way with even like he shows that he, he's trying to show he cares but in the end his allies get the opposite effect of that feel like they're getting the opposite effect of that until he actually until they actually confront him about it and he actually lets them know his reasoning behind it uh, and that's kind of exactly what it is with Jefferson Pierce like he keep he keeps thinking that Bruce is is just piling his problems onto him and he doesn't really trust him with it of course Bruce keeps saying he does trust him or else he wouldn't have brought him into this but but Black Lightning has his doubts while with Katana well <laughs> it's an interesting relationship she and uh, Black Lightning have because when when Black Lightning's feeling questioning about what's going on with Batman and what is his motives he goes and visit and he, he goes and visits Katana Tana to get a little advice on what to do as the team leader for the outsiders like the field team leader and Batman being the general you know, if you guys understand that and that's when they get into something very interesting here and it had it, Katana has black lightning pick up a sword and then they sword battle <laughs> that is pretty cool actually really cool <laughs> Because I never really seen Black Lightning use a sword. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he really is, doesn't know how to sw swing so well with it and stuff. Because there was even then, when, even when Katana told him that to uh, pick up the sword, he's like, I don't know how to swing a sword. And then Katana was like, even a child knows what to do with a sword. But yeah, that's basically what Black Lightning said. He doesn't know what to do with the sword, but then she's like, a child knows what to do with the sword. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Super funny. <laughs> but <laughs> what what 
what Katana feels is that Katana actually does feel like he is the leader and she will follow his orders and what to, what to do. But the thing is, it's kind of like Jefferson Pierce doesn't have much confidence in himself. That's kind of what this book is telling us at the beginning here. He's going to just work his way to finally being sure of himself and losing that down and truly becoming the actual field leader of this team. Because I'm believing this is why the team's not functioning so well. Because they got a, they got a field leader who's not really sure if he's the right man for the job and, and in doing so that that's causing friction between signal and orphan who who for Orphan, she's more of just fearful of her past. And if you guys have don't know her history, you can check you can check it out through other books like Comic Storian and others. Or if you got DC Universe, just type in Cassandra Kane's name and you'll find many comics that talk about her and that'll help you know about her to help you know about her before you even get into this book asking you what's this girl's past who is she <laughs> yeah while in the meantime signal he's just fearful of what of being weak and everything thinking he will hold the team back <laughs> but at, but with all that being said though while all this is going on, eventually Batman finds out about what happened to Sophia and has the team go out there to try to find her while he goes over to Markovia to, to check out some sort of black marketing that's going on down there. Does that mean sometime in the future we're going to get Brion on this team maybe? Uh, if we do, that'll be interesting. I'd definitely like to see it because I'd like to see what they've been doing, what they're going to do with Brion because I kind of lost track of what they did with them after the original Outsiders and stuff. I mean, I heard things here and there and I didn't know anything about what he did in New 52. And for those of you guys who are wondering, I'll just let y'all know that if y'all know Tara Markov back from Teen Titans, who was part of the Teen Titans. She's the half brother. She's the half brother of Brion Markov. So Brion Markov is the half brother of her. In case you guys were wondering, like I said, all information down in the link description down below of Batman and the out my Batman and the Outsiders video of who who are they? <laughs> but either but either case, like ask for ask for the, like the outsiders themselves like i said they were supposed to look for sophia who at the end was founded by somebody who let her know that the guy who was attacking him was a guy named uh uh how do you say his name ashimali ashimali or some i i I just try to say the name as best I can, guys. So I'm sorry if it didn't make sense or sound sounded weird or something. I'm doing my best here. But either case, this guy was hired by Ra's al Ghul to kill Sophia and her father. Why? I don't know why, but whatever. There's, whatever. I'm sure we'll get answers as we're getting cl closer. But just so you know, in this scene right here, you're thinking... And then this guy works for works for a racial goal, but no, this is where it leads into something very interesting. You see, it's a guy from the future by the name of Caliber. And if you look at this guy, does he not put a reminder to you over on the Marvel side of the comics of a guy named Cable? Because he certainly does for me. Like, I know only a little about Cable. Like, he's from the future. He's had some history with Deadpool. And I think he's had some he had some history with Bishop over in the Marvel, Marvel side of the comics things. But this guy, he comes here saying that Sophia is like a key for something that's happening in the future. And he's here to help her out. Eh. I don't really know if you can trust this guy, or because I'm thinking he may be, I don't know, maybe anti-hero or just straight on villain, putting up a front there. But definitely, this got you interested in wondering, what's this guy going to do? I mean, like I said, he's just like a definite, he just looks like a reminiscent of Cable. And, and hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I have nothing wrong with that, because here's the thing. Now, I have people who are always out there, some people out there who who will like just uh, read Marvel or DC and then they're always some of them kind of put out there saying why they don't why they like DC or Marvel Marvel and why they don't like it the other way around and and some of them for some of them some of the issues come up in saying that Marvel copied DC or DC copied Marvel with this or that and all I just tell them is guys they've been copying each other for years so don't even try that argument with some of us people who have been fans of these things for so long because really all I see is that they 
So they they getting reference ideas from some characters that are famous on this side and some characters are famous on that side. It's no it's no bit it's no big deal deal really because that's what references are now out there. It, like people get may get some original ideas, but they still don't get them without some references from coming from somewhere in some way that'll give you some reminiscing about things like. Take for Teen Titans, for instance, with the new, with Adam Glasses run on Teen Titans, with those three new characters, for mostly Dijin and Brownhouse, I'm seeming reminiscings of Marv Wolfen and George Perez's character that were made in Teen Titans, such as with Dijin, Starfire and Raven mixed into one, with Roundhouse, a reminder of Beast Boy. <laughs> But either case, still though, guys, this was a great, great book. I loved it, and I love where where it's gotten us going so far. Brian Hill, Dexter Soy, you guys are doing awesome. I hope you continue to do great, and I like where all of this is going. I really hope we can explore more into these characters. And yeah, Katana, I also got the got those books on her when she was with the Suicide Squad. I think something about Black Squad, and she and she has a ward named Halo. Hopefully, Halo comes in. Too because she's a member of the original Outsiders too and I would really love to see her in in this. Her and Brion <laughs> yeah, like I hope we can expand the team more here or maybe even this Sophia kid who's in this book join the team. I really would love it but definitely guys, great book I'll give it an 8 an eight out of 10. Great way to start things off and if you guys are enjoying my videos all you gotta do is click that like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos and until then, Mega Geek Mixer Signing out. Bye.